Hey folks, so I do have a soft spot for low profile mechanical keyboards and today we're looking at a board that is yes, low profile, but that also has a very unique design. That is the Morgri RKB68, it's nothing new, in fact it was released in 2018, but I've seen very few reviews of it on YouTube, so here we are today, reviewing it. Let's go! So it comes in a stylish all white box, there's a match sheet protecting the keyboard and then the keyboard is in a foam tray and under that hides the USB-C cable and manuals. Now to the keyboard itself, it's a very unique design, it's also offered in white and orange. I would have personally preferred this one, this blue and white theme isn't too bad but I'm not a fan of the light pink power button. Speaking of that pink button, it's meant to power on or off the keyboard for Bluetooth connectivity. And on the other end of the board, you get three additional buttons for switching between up to three Bluetooth devices. And then just beside these buttons, there is a USB-C port. Under the keyboard, you get fixed rubber pads, with the one at the back being a bit thicker to create a slight angle, as the case is actually flat otherwise. Zooming out a bit, the finish of the case is super unique and feels super high quality. It looks and feels like ceramic, although the company reports it as being aluminum with a glossy paint finish. It is as good as it gets in terms of keyboard case paint jobs, in my view. In terms of layouts, this keyboard features a standard 65% layout, mostly following the NC standard as usual, apart from the right side modifiers and the right shift key being narrower. The keycaps have a proprietary unsculptured profile, so all rows have the same profile, they're fairly thin and flat, but they do have a spherical surface. And I thought they felt pretty good for a low profile mechanical keyboard. The legends are dye sublimated and the plastic used is PBT, so these should last a while. However, it might be a bit harder to replace them as the switches are kale chalk low profile switches with their proprietary stem system. So yeah, this board houses KL Chalk V1 low profile switches, either reds, whites or browns, and this unit here has browns. These are the best low profile switches I've tried yet, keep in mind I haven't tried the KL Chalk V2s nor the new optical switches in Keychron's K3 keyboard. These are a lot more stable compared to Gateron low profile switches and at first I almost thought these were full size switches. They have quite a bit of travel and the bump feels similar to a standard brown switch, the main difference being that there is no pre-travel for the tactile bump. In terms of stabilizers, they're not the worst, although they are not factory lubed, so they could sound better if lubed. One of the main features of this keyboard is its Bluetooth support, it's Bluetooth 5.0 so battery life should be pretty good, and Morgri claims 5 months of battery life, which I'm a bit skeptical on, as it did drop a bit as I was testing it, but it should at least last a while as there are no LEDs on this keyboard. With the on-off switch easily accessible, it would be a habit that's easy to pick up to turn it off overnight to help with that too. One thing I noticed is that the LED at the top stays on whether the keyboard goes to sleep or not, so maybe that can negatively affect the battery life. From my own testing, I didn't get any perceivable lag, keys registering in the wrong order or any jitter, and while it does take a few seconds to reconnect when it goes to sleep, it actually does so only after 30 minutes of inactivity, so it shouldn't happen too often in most use cases, given the long auto sleep delay. Keep in mind that the first batches of press keys won't register when waking up from sleep. So in conclusion, again, a keyboard with a very unique design. I think the pros are the typing experience you get with these keycaps and the kale chalk switches, the overall quality and finish of the case, the great Bluetooth implementation and the uniqueness of the design. On the downsides, the keyboard is not reprogrammable, doesn't have any form of backlights, and it uses switches with a proprietary stem, so replacing keycaps wouldn't be super easy. While it is a compact keyboard, I personally wouldn't carry it around given how heavy it is, and while it is a pretty cool keyboard, if I was on the market for a low profile mechanical keyboard, I would personally wait and see if we can get a low profile keyboard with standard MX stems both on the switches and stabilizers. Something that we should get with the Kcron K3 once it's out, and maybe with the Fnatic Streak 65, if only they had a tactile switch option. 
So that wraps it up for today. As always, I'll have an affiliate link to this keyboard down below. Feel free to use it if you're interested and want to support the channel at the same time. Thanks for watching, make sure to leave a like if you did and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, as I'll see you in a future video.